Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Welcome back in lecture 8. Student basically in lecture up to lecture number 7 we do not talk about live load. Now in this lecture and inshallah in coming lecture we will a little bit talk about a live load. Okay. So uh, let me explain an equivalent frame method some basic concepts. Okay. As we start equivalent frame method, okay, and we code all these concepts, okay, as explained by the code. So in up to lecture number seven, okay, what is equivalent frame, and what is L two, and what is middle strip, half middle strip, okay, column strip. Similarly, these limitations we explain. What is slab beams, and what is columns, clear? And similarly, what are tarsal members and how to co fit tarsal members? Okay, and uh, arrangement of live loads. This is a very important, you can say, section of equivalent frame method. Remember, whenever we are applying a DDM method, approximate coefficient method, basically, those coefficient which was derived they include pattern loading and in equivalent frame method basically as this is the exact method of analysis of a structure so we have to consider live load patterns so what does live load pattern means basically you all uh, you all know are familiar with the um in influence line diagram okay so what basically did in influence line diagram is in our structure analysis basically we have a live load clear that is a almost a wheel load and when that wheel moves let's say from this direction uh, along the span of this uh, beam or along the, along these spans so we see that the shear diagram movement diagram differ that will different uh, differ for each position of this live load and we are interesting to find the maximum movement and the maximum shear for the different location of this live load so the, we basically the pattern loading is also taken that uh, uses that concept okay and here we have to find out <clears throat> that case that if let's say for example a live load here okay only at this span what will be the maximum movement at what location at what location maximum negative movement and maximum positive movement exist similarly let's say if this uh, there is live load along these two spans so what will be the uh, position of bending movement and what will be the position of shear force similarly if live load come here and then again here okay similarly if live load only present here okay and uh, similarly if live load only present here there are so many cases okay there are so many cases we will develop okay for example when live load here okay so different cases and in each different case you got a different bending movement and shear force diagram so finally we got and uh, which is known as basically a movement envelope we got a movement envelope that movement envelope shows us the maximum and minimum movements are maximum and minimum shear forces okay so this is very very important to understand because we have to use pattern loading in equivalent frame method okay so this is this is the one reason that it lengthen the calculation of um, equivalent frame method okay so in today lecture we will cover this okay there there are the limitations of ACA code uh, you see here let me explain this from the code you see when the loading pattern is known the equivalent frame shall be analyzed for that load it is very important in most of the cases it may <coughs> it may prevail that uh, the live load pattern is known to us the live load pattern is known to us for example let's say we have a plaza okay a shopping plaza 
sometime we know that in veranda okay the live load is maximum while in the shops the live load is minimum or let's say you have a garage okay so in a garage or warehouses the live load pattern are almost known to us but there are some other situations where live load pattern is changing okay like in our mosques okay so these kind in this kind of structures okay the live load pattern is changing so we do not know about the live load pattern if the live load pattern is known you have to analyze that structure for that given live load pattern but sa code says that if the live load pattern is not known you have to anal analyze the structure for some given cases which is explained by the sa code okay uh, those limit those um, cases which SCI code basically explains they are uh, um, shown here and similarly you can see those cases right here okay so the first case you have to use pattern loading in that cases remember when you are dead uh, when you are live load to dead load ratio uh, is more than uh, 0.75 okay remember here you see ACI 13.761 says that when the loading pattern is known the equivalent frame shall be analyzed for that load already explained it now it said this section when live load is less than 0.75 dead load means live load to dead load ratio is less than is less than 0.75 mean remember the unfactored these are unfactored load live loads not exceed 3 by 4th of the are 75 percent of the unfactored dead load or the nature of the live load is such that all panels will be loaded simultaneously it shall be permitted to assume that maximum factor movements occur at all sections with full factor live load on entire slab systems this means that if this case exists or prevail that your live load is less than 75 percent of dead load so what you have to do you have to load all the spans with full factor dead load and full factor live load okay this is very important if the live load to dead load ratio is less than or equals to 0.75 if this case prevail remember if this case doesn't prevail let's say live to dead load ratio is greater than 0.75 then you have to use pattern loading and what will be those pattern loading you see here all the spans should be loaded with full factor loading dead load sorry and simultaneous spans so what are what does it mean simultaneous spans let's say this this span should be loaded with dead load full dead load plus three by four of live load this span there will be only dead load no live load and then the next span should be loaded with dead load plus three by four of live live load okay so this will give you remember the maximum positive movement at this point the positive movement will be maximum in this load pattern now for the next if you are interested to find the maximum positive movement at this location you have to uh, apply your full dead load over all the spans plus at this span you have to apply your 3 by 4 live load and if you are interested to find the maximum negative exterior negative movement so you have to ignore all the supports you have to um, you have to choose two spans and this joint should be considered to be fixed while there should be only dead load okay all the two spans should be loaded with dead load while this span should be loaded with three by four of live load similarly if you are interested to find your maximum negative movement here so 
all the two panels should be loaded with full factor dead load plus 3 by 4 up live load and this panel should be loaded with WOD. So you will understand this whole diagram. I did all these analysis for these cases. So okay and uh, I will explain it okay here you here you got okay you were maximum positive movement clear you have to load only this pane okay then if you are interesting to find maximum loading here then you have to load this pane only with 3 by 4 of live load plus your full dead load and similarly negative load will exist the whole dead load plus 3 by 4 of live load the final design movement this is very important i will show you this statement okay the final design movement shall be not less than for the case of full factor dead load and live load on all panels okay this means that uh, let's say for example you have a beam okay and uh, this one clear and it is loaded with full dead load clear and full factor live load now the moment which you got here this is positive let's say this is positive this moment and this moment this one okay so you have to compare this moment which you got for this live load pattern okay this moment should be compared with this type of loading and if this one is less than that one so that load that moment will be taken if this moment is less than the moment in this case then you have to consider this moment and ignore this one similarly for this case and similarly for this case so this is basically our baseline we have to compare all the movements which we got in this load pattern against this load pattern okay and we have to choose the maximum final moments okay now this is important okay let me show you all these discussions okay so here we have all the cases okay first of all um, let me show this one in the lecture okay we discuss it and uh, here you see uh, this is the full factor dead load and live load case okay and this is basically we have one factor which gives us the maximum positive movement at the positive midpoint movement similarly here and similarly here clear but this is the case basically which we have to compare all the load cases against this one clear so let's start you see here we have first of all p1 case p1 means that uh, this is a load loading pattern which is denoted by p1 okay now here you see the load is only present here okay the live load is only here while it will give this case will give us um, the maximum movement at this point clear the maximum movement will the maximum movement at this point clear and remember the live load is now 1.73 kef feet uh, sorry uh, yes kef feet now this is important okay this is very important to understand that you have to apply 3 by 4 of the live load okay we have to apply it 3 by 4 of the live load clear so let me check this so you see <clears throat> that this is our interior story and uh, our interior story is basically analyzed for uh, you see here this is our loading pattern which is denoted by p1 now this case will give us the maximum positive movement at nbc span now here you see this although our live load is 2.88 kip but i have multiplied that 2.88 with the 
3 by 4 so I got 2.16 so this is basically what does it mean that you have to apply it in this we are uh, this is basically our loading pattern p1 now uh, dead load is present the total dead load we already analyzed the structure for dead load so we don't uh, consider dead load now okay we just um, analyzing the structure for 3 by 4 dead load okay so 3 by 4 dead load is 3 by 4 times 2.88 it will give us 2.16 clear so i assign that load here and i got all the movements okay i got all the movements and you see this movement will be now is this one 80 but you have to multiply this uh, okay these movements although these are the movements uh, which i refine here because these are the slab beam movements okay these are the slab beam movements we have to convert these slab beam movements into beam movements by just multiplying the coefficients you see here all the coefficients okay i did all the analysis in my excel sheet which i already explained in lecture number six and seven clear so this is the moment positive moment that is 55 okay this loading pattern for in case of p1 and remember we have to consider this 1.73 okay this is for shear analysis okay we have to consider this loading okay this is for shear analysis because now we are analyzing a, a beam okay and we are interesting to find the shears values as well as the movement values okay as we did in uh, basically in lecture number six seven clear now this is we are interesting in this value only in this value clear that is 55 okay this is for interior story no for ex for top story in case of p1 okay this one now here you see 2.16 this is top story and here you see you got all the movements and the positive movement in this case at six now you have to multiply all the coefficients and after multiplying those coefficients you see here the top story movement positive movement at this point are in the bc panel uh, span will be 58 okay for this case now moving to the next loading pattern we have okay now this pattern you see the for all other load effects remember this is basically that statement clear let me show you this is this this statement in this case i denoted that by p2 okay this is my p2 loading pattern okay now uh, you see here uh, for this interior story i analyze the whole structure okay remember uh, let me show you that when you are uh, analyzing your structure for this kind of arrangement so you have to consider uh, here fixed end movement no fixed end movement we have just only fixed end movement here clear and uh, your load will be this one clear you have to not take on 2.88 you have to multiply this 2.88 with 3 by 4 okay and uh, okay the rest of the calculation is same similarly in um, for your uh, full loading case when you have a full factor dead load and a full uh, factor live load remember in this case we have zero dead load because we already analyzed the structure for dead load at the end basically we we add that dead load movements with this uh, these movements okay which we got here now 2.88 is uh, now remember in this case as this is full load case so that why we will consider to total loading not we have to multiply 3 by 4 in this case clear and uh, after uh, after the moment distribution table we got these movements clear these movements this is for interior story full loading is considered now okay so these are the slab beam reactions and movements we have to convert these slab beam movements to beam movements by multiplying those coefficients after multiplying those coefficients let me show you okay this one here you see we multiplied the factors 
and now these are the movements and shears for beam okay and you see here you see the full loading case we have full factor dead load and live load but dead load in this case is zero remember and we consider 1.73 because we are in this stage we are analyzing a beam clear not a slab beam now in this stage you see this is 69 this is 48 this is 48 69 now you see in p1 case at this point we got a movement of let me show you this is very interesting okay very very interesting this is for interior story now p1 you see 55 55 now 55 is uh, at this point and you see in the full loading condition you see 48 so this is less than so that why it suggests that we have to consider this moment okay not this one remember not this one okay we ignore this one similarly uh, for a top story okay for a top story bending moment in p uh, in full loading case you see at pc we have 47 positive moment and for v1 okay for v1 we have 58 so we have to consider this moment and ignore this one ignore this value clear so we have to compare each load pattern with this p2 this one and this one p2 and um, for interior story and for top story clear now the next load pattern is um, let me show you here we we did this case this is p1 clear this is p1 and we got here 55 and 58 okay now uh, the next case is uh, what we have that is v3 now p3 is for interior story and as well as for top story clear so here we have you see the simultaneous panels or spans okay are the adjacent pans is now loading okay so we have this pan having load and this pan having load now in this case you got the maximum movement at this point and this point after a moment distribution table and multiplying all remember these are the these are the movements remember here you got the maximum at this point the maximum and 3 by 4 remember not 2.88 we will consider um, 3 by 4th of that loading okay remember here we have to consider 2.16 we are analyzing this structure for we are not considering 2.88 we are considering 2.16 remember because this is another load pattern that is p3 and now from this load pattern we got the maximum movement at this point and uh, at this point clear so sorry at this point only in ab and de okay because if this loading is uh, is reversed we have a load here and similarly leaving this empty and a load here so you we will cut here the maximum movement okay so that movement will be transferred here as well note converting these movement by multiplying this with the coefficients okay uh, so this is p3 this one now this is 62 okay so this is very important 62 is now the maximum positive movement in a b panel and similarly in b a panel as well remember now we have to compare this with the full loading case that is p2 okay that is you now we have to compare this interior story versus interior story uh, for p2 here you see we have 69 so here 69 uh, I think so this is 69 yes for full loading case and uh, in the case of where is my p2 okay. so this is basically in the case of p3 so 
in case of p3 we got the maximum movement here that is 62 but we have to con we have to compare this movement with the p2 loading case that is full loading case okay and here we got 69 so that why we have to consider this movement right now okay we will ignore that 62 okay we have to take this one clear similarly for interior story and similarly for top story so in case of top story we got 68 while if you compare this load this movement with your um, p2 that is the full loading case so you got here that is uh, uh, this one okay so you here you got 75 so that why now we will consider 75 yes 75 okay we will we will ignore this one and we consider this 75 this one will be the maximum moment clear and uh, we will ignore okay these this one 62 and 68 okay because these movements are larger as compared to that one clear now the next is p4 for interior story so you see these two adjacent spans will be loaded and we got the maximum negative movement here now the maximum movement here you see that movement is now uh, minus 96 okay so this is the maximum negative movement now this is for interior story and for top story it is minus 99 okay so comparing into interior story with the the full loading case so here we have basically minus 121 clear minus 121 after okay after the multiplication of these factors so this is greater than as that minus 90 90 i think so 90 96 so we drop this value okay we don't consider these two values okay both for top story and both for um, interior story because uh, for full loading case you see one minus one to one that is one to two and for top story here 125 so in both for both stories this case cover it okay the full factor dead load and live load case cover it clear similarly we have next pattern that is p5 and p5 will give us the maximum negative movement right here okay here at this point that is the exterior negative movement and this will be 52 for interior for interior story and for top story it will be 40 okay after multiplication of the factors so let us compare this interior story negative movement with against p2 loading and here you see this is 52 so this is more than as in that case so we will take on this one okay and for top story this is 40 while in the p2 loading case it is 44 so we will consider this one and dropping these two values clear so this is the final you can say loading movements okay we have just analyzed the structure for different types of pattern loading we will cover the 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 net okay you can say the whole summary of this, these eight lectures and we will summarize you can say we will summarize the whole equivalent frame method okay so you see here now that uh, here we have okay uh, basically they did the analysis for uh, only for this case after that they draw these movements they find out these movements from your from where they got these movements i will just show you here um, let me show you here okay this p2 case okay this p2 case and here you see the analysis of that load cases for interior story and uh, the bending movement and shear force values right here this 73 this is for interior story but still i don't uh, yes 73 
okay and uh, here we have for interior story this 73 similarly one 105 let me show this value you see here 102 okay then minus 179 and 166 okay so you see 179 and 166 okay then we have 70 right this one this one so there basically in this diagram they have 105 but i have 102 this is for interior story if you do the same analysis for top story let me show you the top story results so this is the top story analysis not this one uh, this one this is the for top story you see here and uh, you see all the movements and you see all the 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 net final support movements right here and you see 56 so they have also 56 similarly 111 that is positive movement here you have also 110 similarly here 184 and 172 so you have you see here 183 and 172 and similarly this movement is right here that is 69 okay so this is how they basically did uh, uh, they bring these values okay from that analysis they show there here and then they repeat the same procedure same table i already explained this in lecture number six and five i think so after that they show the movements they run the analysis and they they find out the fast movements the center line movements and shears and then they convert that those movements into fast movements so where are uh, i i show you the net result of where i did this analysis okay um, here i have this is p2 okay so in p2 case this one here you see that these are my net uh, movements which is multiplied with the factors so these are the movements which i got for beam okay just only for beam not for slave beam remember and uh, these are the net shear values which i got for beam and you see 19.08 so let me show you these values right here okay 19 point uh, you see here this is they have 18 point 39 which is close to our calculated value okay 19 clear and uh, this is uh, for interior story okay and this one is for sorry this one they have they draw it for sorry this is for top story okay so we have to compare it for top story so this one is our top story results you see 18.39 so the next one is minus 24.86 and 22 so let me show you here here we have minus 24 and 22 and the rest of the values are same clear and uh, now you have to find out the fast movements so the fast movements will be here you see the critical shear force value are the fast shear force values are 17.38 similarly minus 23 okay let me show you th these values you see 17.4 here you have 23.8 and here we have 23.5 so th in the same way as we did in lecture number six and seven clear and uh, for interior story okay this is for uh, now let me show you some movements okay this is 44 so let me show you this 44 where it is uh, here we have 44 similarly here we have 75 now where it uh, 75 here you see 75 now this one will be convert now into fast movement not this one clear this one so 44 now you find the fast movement in the same way as we did in lecture number six so you got 
the same value right here 33.67 and similarly for the rest of the values clear so this is how they did this analysis okay and similarly okay similarly for interior story okay this is for interior story now they they are run again the same analysis because here you see uh, we have top story and we have interior story so for interior story you have to run again that table okay you have to find out what you have to find out these movements okay these beam movements and then from these beam movements you have to find shear values and from those shear values you have to find the maximum positive movements okay as he did here and uh, I think so this is quite simple procedure okay remember you have to assign the same load which we already calculated in lecture number 5 I think so 1.73 kip per feet it is for beam not for slab beam and with the help of this and these movements you find shears after finding shears you find fast shears okay shear forces the uh, and then with these movements with these loads and these reactions you find the center line movements after finding center line movements you will find the fast values so i therefore i i do not explain these values because i already explained it in lecture number six after that the same procedure as we did in our lecture number six seven how to find the column movements and how to basically uh, transfer these movements to the top and bottom columns in view of these factors after that you have to draw your movement diagrams for your columns and this will ends up this equivalent frame analysis just only for the pattern loading for okay in this case okay not for all cases remember not for all cases it is just only for this case so i already uh, explained we we basically i run the analysis for p1 case for p2 case p3 case p5 case p6 case so in next lecture inshallah i will explain the whole net movements for which what are the values of those movements for which we will design our beams and for which we will find the steel area so see you in next lecture thank you for watching